altos, trebles, tenors, sorry, shh. Hearing and listening are two different things, clearly. After a shaky start, at last, things are on the up. It affects the rest of my day, I have to be honest and say that. And you do take it, not personally, but in the same way that when something goes well, you're on a high and you feel good about it, but of course you're never going to get that all the time. And it probably would be boring if that were to be the case. After such a tough practice, Nigel's heading back to his musical roots at St Anne's Cathedral. People think it's St Anne's Cathedral, Belfast Cathedral, um, but of course Belfast has two cathedrals and that needs to be more widely known. He's dropping off leaflets publicising future choral recitals in a building he knows only too well. And in the peace and quiet, there's room to reflect on present frustrations and that happy past. I was here from the age of seven to the age of 18. I was a treble from seven to 14 and then came back two years later as organ scholar. So that's where I had my first musical education. It brings back lots of memories, I have to say. I think I stood in a variety of places. I think this was probably the last one. My goodness, this is weird. It's the first time I've done this. Um, I feel like a child again, sitting here, just looking at the same view, of course, which hasn't changed, even though I have. It was very strict upbringing in terms of the choir and in terms of the discipline involved. You expect the same of every child that you work with now in an ideal world, because it makes you professional in everything you're doing, wanting to get the best out of people all the time. Ten-year-old Donal McCann was tickled pink when Nigel signed him up. Yeah. <laughs> I went, but I gave up on cops to go to the choir. But I would like to go to Rome, definitely. That'd be brilliant. I just love to sing in the churches. I think they're they're beautiful. He's already a talented musician, but only started to learn music a year ago. I try to aim for about an hour a day. Sometimes I don't get that, but I try to. I used to have a wee small keyboard, but I would still practice on it, but the piano is much better. And you have the pedals, which I didn't have my keyboard. We know we enjoy music, but we don't know a lot about music. So he's the driving force behind it all. And I mean, if a child's into any sport, a parent is going to encourage them. Donald gave up his place at the Scouts in order to follow his musical dreams, but Mum Maxine and Dad Michael have made sacrifices too. He came home one day and he says, Dolly, I'm doing my test in about three weeks' time. I'm doing my... I said, she hasn't even got a piano to practice on, you're just playing on that wee keyboard. So I seen Mr McClintock and he went out with me and I got a piano delivered within a couple of days. And it's beautiful in the house too, because the TV doesn't get played at all now. And I would say to my wife, listen to that there. And you'd open the doors and you'd hear that lovely music coming, so it was money well invested. We've been waiting at the tarmac and do up our driveway for the past three or four years, so it'll have to go and hold for another while, because that's what paid for the piano. <laughs> The day of the Mass has finally arrived. Nigel squeezing in a last-minute rehearsal to warm the voices and steady the nerves. All of them deliver. Obviously, there are those who find it easier than others, and I think it's more a question of um, the confidence of those that know what they're doing are the ones who are going to sing out, and those that have just yet to learn a little bit more remain a little bit more quiet. Lovely sound, Ben, it's lovely, but it sounds like you from Liverpool, worked, okay? This hasn't worked for us, worked, okay? Okay, shh, shh, shh. 
can you in an orderly fashion now going across? Make it look as if you do it all the time. They look the part. But can they raise the roof and make this mass memorable? great to have had um, organist tonight um, so I could just concentrate on getting the focus of the boys and you know eyeballing and making sure people are watching for the consonants and um, everything else. The guest organist is Ian Keatley from Westminster Abbey. His enthusiasm is reflected in the song that the boys make. I mean at the mass tonight it's at times overwhelming the noise they're making. It's fantastic. It's moving for the worshippers, I think, which is which is really important. From the organ gallery to the altar. All those long hours of practice have led them to this moment. There's a richness of tone which you hear across the, the spectrum of the choir, which is, is just fantastic. At the beginning, there were one or two strong boys, I think, leading it. But the thing which struck me this evening was that all the boys were really committed to this. And what a performance. One thing I don't understand is why on Sunday mornings this church isn't packed out. Music to the ears of Father Hugh Kennedy. I was delighted because obviously for most of the congregation they hadn't heard the boys before. And to style of music maybe they hadn't heard for a long time. So yeah, it was very, very positive. So I'm very encouraged by it. Singing at Sunday Mass is just the first challenge. Performing for the paying public is quite another. Just try the light yellow stone. Oh, so it's and one, two. Rehearsals are underway for a concert with the internationally famous Irish tenors, and singer Kieran Nagel believes Joe is a star in the making. That's just beautiful. Beautiful. It's one of my favourite songs and it's just gorgeous. That kid's got something special. That's beautiful. Sometimes yeah, I get nervous. I got nervous this morning when I read the thing solo. The on this day, yeah. the coronation mass, yeah, it was a big, big thing. I remember singing that during my fresh kill and if, uh, if ever I could have sung it as well as that, now I tell you, I'd have done well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. I know. High praise for Joe and for the choir. Nigel drills these guys extraordinarily well and the voices are absolutely excellent. The blend is incredibly good. Uh, they turn themselves out immaculately all the time. So they really care about the music. They're really, really into it. It raises the bar for us. We've got to behave and we've got to perform well tonight. The pressure's on. The choir will share a slice of the ticket sales to help raise funds. So this is their debut as commercial artists. Obviously a bit nervous because you don't know what way it's going to go because they're not yet that experienced. You sort of think, will they deliver, will they not? That's the scary bit for me. 
Nigel's nerves aren't shared by these young performers. And anyway, they've got a great warm-up act. But uh, of course, but the wonderful thing about this, it's always good fun to watch the way they respond to something like this because towards the end when they start doing their opera choruses, it begins to get quite sort of heightened and just to see them sort of almost letting themselves go. It's all going so well, but with only moments to go before the boys take to the stage, there's drama for Michael. He's just lost a baby tooth, but the show must go on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's um, a real treat to share a concert with the Irish tenors. It's a wonderful chance to do it and to let you hear a bit of our repertoire, which we're doing in advance of our trip. To and it's an inspired choice. sing nicely when they're all in form and when they're all trying, having another performance to do and having to up the game constantly. Um, so it's a uh, it's good, good experience. They're well on the way, you know, they, they really are, they're going to surpass us without a doubt. We're, we're 10 years down the line and we're going to go for that and longer. Oh, it was so, so impressive to see such young, young children with such great voices and then to hear the Irish tenors. Such a great surprise for us. And I think the venue of uh, St. Peter's was perfect for their voices. It just felt like it was very angelic. So everyone's happy, from angels to tooth fairies. Um, my tooth your tooth fairies? Yes, he's missing a tooth, but Michael still found his voice. Next time, the boys are beaming into millions of homes across Europe with their debut on TV. It's exam time. Ooh, hey, yay! <laughs> there you go. And from joy to tragedy. A memorial service at Stormont brings out the best in the boys.